the Erling Haaland saga looks set to not be a long and drawn out summer protest with one of the journalistic goats, David Ornstein, claiming that Haaland's and Man City is a done deal plus confirmation expected next week. According to sources in Germany, personal terms have been complete. Dortmund anticipate City informing them in the coming days of their intention to activate the release clause. Now, this was a deal that a lot of people thought might protrude. This is a deal a lot of people thought might take the entirety of the summer. Why would you think this, you would ask? Well, quite simply because this is one of the most sought-after strikers in world football. Statistically speaking, forget your preference, the most prolific young striker, young number nine since the original Ronaldo R9. That isn't to say he's as good as, I'm just talking about his goal conversion rate, his Champions League scoring pedigree, and of course the hype that is around this young man. Manchester City, along with along with Chelsea, Man United, Barcelona, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich have all shown interest in the attacker over the course of the past 12 to 18 months. But it does look set that Haaland will follow in the footsteps of his father and play for Manchester City. Now, this is big news. For, for a number of reasons, this is big news. One, he's a killer up front. With the way Manchester City play, the amount of times that ball finds itself in the 18-yard box of their opponents, this is going to be very, very dangerous indeed. He has... 85, um, it, it, it's about like 85 goals in 88 appearances for Borussia Dortmund as of today, which is absolutely staggering. Now, a lot of people will throw into this, oh, you know, we first broke onto the scene. I remember with Haaland, there was Bundesliga tax. That, that was the first thing that was thrown at this young man, Bundesliga tax. Sorry, um, Austrian league tax. He then moves, he then moves to, um, he then moves to Dortmund, one of the one of the top leagues in the world, and instantly again Bundesliga tax. You, know, you can't really take his goals there seriously. What I've always found embarrassing about this point of view, really, really embarrassing about this this, this point of view and this kind of perspective from people, is how Erling Haaland can be played down. Erling Haaland can be kind of attacked and lambasted for scoring goals in the Bundesliga. Yet a lot of people, these same very people, will call for Robin Lewandowski, Robert Lewandowski to be able to win the Ballon d'Or. You know, what you do at league level, I always feel is your bread and butter. If you've got any real claim to Ballon d'Or, any real claim to being the best or one of the top two, top three, top five strikers in the world, or, or any position that you play in, I have always felt that what you actually need is a – you need your base in your – domestically to be strong. You can't just do it in the Champions League. You can't just do it in one competition. It has to be widespread. And that's exactly what this man does. 85 goals in 88 games for Borussia Dortmund. And then you start to move down and look at what he's doing in the Champions League. If you look – you know, his first season, you know, when he in the first campaign in, in the 1920 season, um, when he, he was still playing for Salzburg, it was eight goals in six Champions League games. He then moved to Dortmund and got two and two in the 2021 season. It was 10 goals in eight games this season. Injuries could his campaign, but three goals in three games. This man is an absolute powerhouse. He has more goals than appearances in the hardest competition in the world in terms of quality, the UEFA Champions League. He is an absolute powerhouse. Now, you all know I don't do salt. You all know that I don't do... You all know how much I've praised him. If you've watched the Terrace for a long... You might be new to the Terrace right now, you don't know this. But I've praised this guy for a very, very, very long time. I'm not going to suddenly change that because... He's moving to one of my biggest rivals as a Manchester United fan. This is one of the greatest young strikers on the planet. He has the potential to break all kinds of goal-scoring records. He has the ability to go on to be one of the greatest strikers that Europe and the world has ever produced and seen. Injuries are probably the only element on his resume that should be a slight concern. They're the only thing that should be a slight concern. If he can remain, if you look at it as a season, this year, three, four injuries. Last season, four injuries. The 2020 season, five injuries. A couple of illnesses in there as well. He does pick up and miss a fair, a fair little chunk of seasons at a young age. This might just be growing pain, though. This might just be something that 
kind of naturally fixes itself as he gets older. We often forget how young Harlan really is. He's only he's 21, turning 22, played a lot of football young. And I actually think City will be good for him in this regard because it will kind of enable him to be rotated at times, rested at times. I think when you go to a Dortmund, when you're playing for a Salzburg and you're as good as him, you have to play nearly every single available minute of nearly every single game. In exactly the same way that I think Tottenham have really damaged Harry Kane's physique, physicality, body, because it's almost like you're being overused because you're all there is. Wayne Rooney suffered with this at Manchester United, overused because that's all there is. You know, Paul Pogba at Man United often rushed back from injury. Why? Because there was no one else in that area. I think Man City will be a great fit for him. In terms of Harlem, we're going to talk about that in a minute. In terms of what I, what I think he's going to do, £63 million move to City is set to be announced this week, according to the Mail Online Sport, who are actually one of the first outlets to break that this deal was nearly done. We're going to delve into that in a little bit more detail, but first, an update from the Football Terrace. The last couple of years has been amazing for the Football Terrace, the growth and the direction that we've gone in is pretty much down to all of you. And the fact you come back time and time and time again, we grow month in, month out, year in, year out. So thank you. YouTube have now introduced a new way of you supporting the Football Terrace and the YouTube community at large by introducing what they call thank yous. Now, you, a lot of you super chat on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, really helping the Football Terrace continue our growth. This is now available on pre-recorded and uploaded videos, as well as on the playbacks of our live streams. You can simply click on the thank you button and write your comment. What we dedicate and commit ourselves to doing on the Terrace is responding to as many as possible, if not all of the thank yous that come through. Your donations towards the Football Terrace never go unnoticed and mean the absolute world to me and everybody behind the scenes at the Football Terrace. So a big thank you to everyone that's already done one and that will do one today and hopefully in future. I just want to say thank you. You keep us going. We have lots of great things on the horizon for the Football Terrace with our official scarves on the way out soon. Some redesigns of some current favourites at the Terrace plus TFT away days that we've been planning for just under a year now are almost ready towards the end of this season going into the next campaign. We're not going to share much more about it until it comes out. We're sure that you and of course our members that will get exclusive access to this will absolutely love it. Enjoy the rest of the video. As I've said, make sure the like button has been smashed. Look forward to seeing you in the comment section. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you soon. What this means for Man City is massive, though, because at the end of the day, they are bringing in a killer, a real killer. I've said before, and I stand by this, in a Manchester City team, I think Haaland, fully fit, of course, fully fit. I think 30 games into a campaign, he could break Mo Salah's goal scoring record in the Premier League. I think he is that potent. I think he'll finish that many chances. I think he'll be that deadly. This signing, I know nobody else has done any business yet, but this signing for me, City are already favourites to do three on the bounce next year. They're already favourites to win three Premier League titles on the bounce. This for me almost cast irons it, rubber stamps it, puts a gold seal of approval around it. Liverpool, Chelsea, they're the only two, in my opinion, that could conceivably stop City next year. Chelsea is up in the air. We don't quite know what they're looking to do in the summer. I still think there's a decent squad there. They get the right recruitment. They get the right attitude from the start of the season. You never quite know. Liverpool, though, the only real contenders that I believe, though, that you could say really have a legitimate chance of stopping City from doing a three-peat in the Premier League. But Liverpool are going to have to do something big in the transfer market now because Harlan is a game-changer. There was another rumour and another game changer that was on the agenda, but Ornstein's also addressed this today and said that Paul Pogba is understood to receive the flattering proposal from Manchester City and gave serious consideration to them. However, Pogba's representatives are believed to have informed City that he is going to continue his career at a different team. So it does appear that Paul Pogba has turned down that offer. And I said the other day, and I stand by what I say as a fan, I was very disappointed that he was listening to them and that there was this possibility that he was going to join Manchester City. Now, I am ha glad that he's decided not to. You know, this may be because the proposal elsewhere was better as opposed to having any loyalty to Manchester United. From a professional standpoint, 
I totally got why I was talking to them. As a fan, I was very, very annoyed. And sometimes you have to almost think about those two things separately. They're not mutually exclusive of one another. But it appears Paul Pogba isn't going to Manchester City, but they are looking to sign, according to Fabrizio Romano, a midfield player this summer. Could that be a Chiuameni? Could they be the team that goes in for somebody like a Declan Rice? Remember, Haaland is only costing £63 million, which is a snip for a player worth 150 to 200 million pounds in a normal market. But this is a big, big morning for Manchester City. They've all but secured the Premier League title in many people's eyes after beating Newcastle United. They are on the edge of announcing, not just completing the deal for, announcing the signing of one of the hottest attacking prospects in football that could give them 10 plus years of further sustained and consistent success. They're on the lookout for a new midfielder as well. City are going nowhere. Their pursuit of more domestic dominance and Champions League success is there to all, for all to see. But I want your thoughts and I want your feelings. Make sure that like button is being smashed. Until next time, my people, take care. Goodbye. God bless. See you.